who are we and where did we come from? These are some age old questions that people have liked to talk about in many different fields. But let's start talking about how we investigate the fossil record so we can answer these in a very literal sense. Now we're gonna start talking about human evolution or really the human fossil record. So we get to talk about lovely skulls like these. Up here we have Mrs. Plus, a famous specimen from South Africa. We have an early modern human, and then we have a specimen from the middle Pleistocene. Um, in human evolution, um, these are age old questions, of course. This, people are drawn to this field because we're curious, like, who are we? Where did we come from? But also, why are we the way we are? So when we're looking at the fossil record, we're trying to figure out, like, okay, who were our ancestors? What did they look like? But also, we're trying to figure out why. What were the evolutionary pressures that we have the traits that we do today? Um, that looking at human evolution is a, really fun for many reasons, but one of these reasons is it's pretty interdisciplinary. There are many different things we need to be aware of or ways you can investigate human evolution. So here are just four things that people could look at. Some people are looking really closely at the anatomy of modern humans because the best way to understand um, how we became who we are is first we need to understand what we are. What is our anatomy? What can we do? How are we different from chimpanzees? We also, you know, have take a deep look at fossils in the past and then we compare those fossils to modern human anatomy. Other people are looking looking at stone tools and how our technology has evolved and changed over time. But also for any of this to make sense when we're looking at the fossil record, we also need to be a little bit aware of geology. Um, this picture here is of the African Rift Valley, which is just a gorgeous um, geological formation, but is also where a lot of these fossils we're going to talk about come from. So as we're getting in, um, used to human evolution and all the things we need to know, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the geography. Then we're gonna talk about what is a hominin. Hominin is a very important term you're gonna hear a lot in this unit. And then lastly, we'll cover some resources to help you get used to what we're talking about. But let's start about the geography. As you can see here, human evolution happens primarily in Africa. Um, the two most common places we're gonna talk about are East Africa, there's a bunch of sites up here, and then South Africa. Um, <laughs> it's kind of cute, East Africa and South Africa kind of have a, a jovial rivalry over which part of Africa is more important for human evolution. Um, however, there are a few other sites, like you can see this one um, site up here in Chad, and there's also, you know, that one site in Malawi in between that cluster in East Africa um, and the cluster in South Africa. Um, however, since we are going to be talking about Africa a lot, it's helpful to understand a little bit more about um, the geography of Africa as a whole. Looking at this map here, Africa is pretty big, but you know, Eurasia also looks big, the Americas also look big, but this is a consequence of the type of map we're using. Um, so the most common map that you'll run across is called a Mercator projection, and you can see how we make it here. So we ha uh, the Earth is mostly round, not, not perfectly round, but very close. Um, and so when we have a round object and we try to put it onto a flat surface, um, it, the images are going to be a little distorted depending on how you display them. Um, so when we make it flat like this, we have the effect of making things that are um, at the top or the bottom um, appear much larger than they actually are. Things in the middle appear much smaller. So one way to um, compare this is to look at different map projections and how they distort a normal human face. Um, in number two, the Mercator projection, you can see the chin and the forehead are much larger than they would, um, would normally be in a face and everything in the middle is kind of squashed. So remember that Africa, is actually a lot bigger than most people think. Um, so here you can fit um, the United States, China, India, Eastern Europe, and then multiple countries of Western Europe um, in Africa. Oh, and also Japan right there at the bottom. So Africa is huge, very, very big. Um, so even though I'm like, oh, human evolution happens in Africa, it is important to make, remember that there are different parts of Africa and they are not very close together. Um, another important geological fact about Africa is that there's a really interesting rift system happening in East Africa. A rift system is where two plates are actually pulling apart from each other. Um, and it looks a little bit like this. This is just one of the um, literal cracks in the earth due to this rift system. Um, because the plates are pulling apart from each other, now we're exposing 
um, all of these different rock layers. So yes, that's also where our ancestors were, but because of this risk system, it's a little bit easier to find fossils here than in other parts of the world because we're starting to expose layers of rock that have been covered for um, millions of years. But next, let's talk about hominin. A hominin is a really important term that you're gonna hear a lot if you're learning about human evolution. Um, so let's think about our taxonomy again. So we have, um, this is an australopith, and then of course a chimpanzee, an australopith is one of our ancestors. Um, so all of us are in order primates, we're all in suborder haplorini, infraorder semiaformes, family hominidae, and subfamily hominidae. Both of us are in these, and now here is where we start to diverge. Um, we are in tribe hominini, and chimpanzees are in tribe panini. I really like this taxonomy because it has food birds in it. That's I, I support all all taxonomies that have food references. Um, so you'll hear, hear hominini and panini, but more commonly you're going to see the colloquial versions of these words as hominins or panins. So a hominin is something that's more closely related to us um, than it is to chimpanzees, and then a panin would be related to chimpanzees. We can also visualize this on a phylogenetic tree because right now, if we're only looking at modern species, we are the only hominin that exists, and there's two different panins here. Um, but when we're looking at the fossil record, anything that's on that branch that is more closely related to us than it is to chimpanzee is a hominin. So all of the fossils we'll be talking about in this unit are hominins, or at least we think they are. And of course, everything that is on the branch more closely related to chimpanzees, we would call those panins. Sadly, we really haven't been able to find good fossil candidates for ancestral chimpanzees, so it does make it a little bit harder to compare. Um, this is partially because that chimpanzees live in forested areas, and it's, it's just much harder to find fossils, and it's actually much less likely that fossilization will occur if you live in a hot and humid rainforest environment. Um, but let's talk a little bit about um, the different fossil discoveries and how that has changed over time. Um, so here's what things looked like in 1956. We had discovered a few species. We, of course, knew about ourselves, Homo sapiens. Um, we'd known about Neanderthals for a while. Um, we discovered some Homo heidelbergensis, a little bit older than Neanderthals, and then Homo erectus um, in both Africa and Asia. And then we also had a few other fossil finds. We had um, Australopithecus africanus in South Africa and um, Paranthropus robustus from South Africa as well. Um, in 1996, we had many more species that we had discovered at this time. So you can see there's a few more species in blue that are a little bit younger. We had discovered a few more uh, robust Australopithecus in green. Um, and we had also discovered Australopithecus afarensis, that's Lucy. And at this time, we had also discovered a slightly older one, Artopithecus ramidus. Um, so 1996 wasn't that long ago. But now we have so many more species that we have discovered that we are aware of now in 2020. Um, so there is just so many more um, species going on that it is a little bit more complicated to figure out um, who's related to who and exactly what happened. Um, you might feel overwhelmed looking at all these names and I admit I do too. Um, that's why I like to think of um, different trends in the fossil record, but also in different groups. So I've colored in the different species here to show the different groups. So in orange, we have our early hominids. In um, yellow, we have genus Australopithecus. In green, we have genus Paranthropus. And then in blue is genus Homo. So we'll be going over these different groups and which species are the important ones to know in the rest of this unit. Um, as you're going through this unit, there are a couple resources that will help ground you um, and figure out what, what's going on here. First, I highly recommend you read this paper by Bernard Wood. Um, he does a really nice overview of what's going on in the fossil record um, and discusses some of the major debates. The next place you want to go is this amazing website put together by the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. So there are th these three tabs, which um, these are the primary ones you're going to want to look at, look at the different research, but also look at the evidence and, um, and then the human characteristics. This will be a great way to look at um, what are the different species, what are the, their characteristics, like where do we find them in the world, what time period did they live, what were their features, but also how they're all related. So can you explain? What is a hominin and what do we need to know to learn about human evolution?